Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking podcast talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. Nice to see you all back here. I hope you're all well. Uh, today we're talking about BPD splitting. Uh, when I originally talked about this on YouTube, go and check out the YouTube channel, by the way, youtube.com slash early morning barking. I, uh, I grouped this with extreme mood swings, um, which I have no idea why I did that. Uh, these are not, these are two completely different things. Mood spring, mood swings and splitting. Um, I, I wonder if I was trying to just talk about mood swings and then splitting got caught in, but I'll talk about splitting anyway. And the oh, what the hell? Let's just do it all together now. Anyway, God, that was a long time ago. I first talked about this on the 17th of July, 2020, back when there was a pandemic and everything. Uh, dark days that seem like such a million years ago now. It's so bizarre. Um, so mood swings and splitting. We're very emotional people. I, I guess we deal with, we'll deal with one and then the other. Uh, the mood swings. Uh, we feel everything so much. Every, everything we feel as people with BPD is turned up to 11. It, it's why I'm so sensitive, right? So many things make me cry. It's, it's debilitating. It's annoying, right? And I mean, like music playing, anything, right? It doesn't take a lot to put me in a sad place with an outside influence. And that sad place is a big, heavy, dark, lonely, sad place. It's it's not nice. It's a sad place. Um, and you can take me from that up to extreme happiness with God knows what and back again. You know, uh, the, the mood swings when they happen are huge and very quick. Blink of an eye, flash, right? They're just so, it is a debilitating thing to have to live with because they, they happen so quickly that you, you can't stop them. All you can do is deal with them once they've happened. And sometimes they're good, right? I mean, a mood swing to a happy place can be a good thing. It can feel good and that's okay. We, we start to panic that it moves into mania, I think, but that's, that's truly a different thing. And people with BPD don't don't have that that's a bipolar thing and and you know where you have the the manic and the despair extremes and we we don't have that we don't we don't go manic but we you know we have highs we have lows and then we have this sort of drudge period in between um that it's easy to get stuck in you know, which is, which feels like not feeling anything for a bit, which is sometimes a sort of pleasant alternative to feeling extremes. You know, I'm, I'm actually, do you know what it is? I'm trying to remember an extreme happy for me. Too often the, the mood swings are to the sad side of things. They're downs. It's easier to fall down than it is to, what, climb up, I guess. And I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time I was sort of ecstatically happy. It's difficult. And I, you know, I have things that drag me down that keep me, keep me lower. And those are the things you have to work on to get happy. But the mood swings are, hell <laughs> there's not there's not much to sort of say about them as such uh, of, you know what a mood swing is you know what emotions are you know how they feel when they're intense and to say well they become intense out of nothing they come from nowhere they they just arrive and hit you and they can go in any direction you can understand that but it is all part of this i i guess we're about to discover why i grouped it with splitting there, there is, BPD is very binary, right? There are so many things that are either on or off, one or zero, good or bad, black or white. And these mood swings are part of that. They, they, they fit in with that. They're either very, very happy or very, very sad. 
There's no sort of, oh, I'm okay, actually. <laughs> you know? No, I'm fine. Um, we, we go from one to the other. And getting better going through the healing process is all part of, you know, involves getting that pendulum to stop swinging from the extremes and rest in the middle where most people live. And when we split, when we talk about BPD splitting, we're talking about that pendulum of, of happiness moving from one extreme to the other, doing a full swing. And the splitting can be applied to anything to anyone at any time it, it's it's representative of that swing and so when you apply it to a person the the most obvious of things the most harmful of things is when you go from thinking that a person is very very good to being very very bad and then we fall out with them we have arguments we have rage all the things that follow falling out with someone it's something i've done many times myself and you know usually it can happen very publicly uh, especially in the days of social media and that sort of thing. In the days of Facebook, it's very easy to to publicly fall out with a lot of people and then to fall out with further people as a result of that. And it's it's all a result of these mood swings, this black and white thinking, this going from good to all the way back. And we don't settle in the middle. And And this is sort of... Not just symptomatic of BPD, but I, I think we're suffering from this in general as a society at the moment, that people are either good or they're bad. They're either with us or against us. They're either on my side or they aren't. They either agree with me or they don't. And them agreeing with me makes them good or bad, evil or good or on my side or not. When the truth is people are complex creatures. We can't expect everybody to agree with us 100% of the time. And that thinking with it brings with it a great deal of entitlement and feeling special. Why should anybody agree with us? Why are we right? Um, and, and so this black and white thinking surrounding people exists in society now. It, it has become a thing we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So-and-so has tweeted something that I don't like, therefore that person is all bad now. And that's unhinged, right? I mean, this is something we're sat here talking about on a mental health podcast, about the symptoms of a personality disorder. And the world is very much a splitting thing now. And we are, we are left with this task of existing in this world of splitting and trying to not do it anymore while the rest of the world continues to do it because they don't have BPD, right? I, I guess that's the thing. Or maybe a lot of them do, which might be worth considering. Um, we have to stay we have to become the sane ones in a world of madness we have to become the one-eyed man in the land of the blind and i i warn you that fixing splitting fixing these mood swings brings with it further difficulties in life it, it gets harder right to exist um because i i don't get outraged at anything or anyone anymore <laughs> And that upsets a lot of people. That makes you feel a lot like you don't fit in. Like you don't belong because you're not part of the crowd anymore. And a crowd can be a good thing for people. It can provide them with safety and security, but it can also provide them with an identity. I am part of this crowd. I do this. We do this. We dress like this. We look like this. Here are our opinions. If you disagree with them, you're a bad man. And when you're suffering from a personality disorder that gives you a low sense of self, a lack of self-identity, and you find things that give you a bit of personality and a bit of thing that you do, it can be hard to sort of do things that move you away from that 
And you will feel that pull happening as you work on fixing splitting. Because fixing splitting is all about empathy and self-worth, right? God, I hate that I keep saying that, right? It's a vocal crutch, you know. So when we split, we do this thing where we go from one extreme to the other. And we're not supposed to, right? That's not healthy. That's not right. Nobody is all good or all bad. Everybody is a mix of both. And yeah, okay, some people are a bit more bad than others. Some some people have different kinds of bad inside them. But more often than not, in general, the average person you meet on the street is a mix of both things. And we have to get to a point where we can understand and accept that. Because when we accept that, when we have that empathy for others and their lives and what they go through, then we force ourselves to not see them as all good or all bad. We force ourselves to see the truth. And when you start to see the truth about people, it becomes a lot harder to get angry at them, to fall out with them, to think of them as perfect or think of them as evil because we're all just people doing our thing right we're all just people trying to live our lives as best we can and get on with ourselves and all that sort of thing that's what we're doing and some of us become a bit more involved in society and share our opinions and some of us become even more involved than that and try and enforce those opinions on other people And we as healing people with BPD have to try to take a step back and understand what's going on with people, understand their motivations, their fears, their worries, the things that bother them, the things that make them happy. We have to understand what motivates people because then it's hard to fall out with them. And it helps us understand ourselves. It helps us forgive ourselves some things, you know, just because you're not perfect. Yes, neither is anyone else. Neither is anyone else. And you are not a bad person because you're not. We can split on ourselves, for goodness sake. We can decide we're just rubbish, that we don't deserve things. We, You know, all of this stuff. And it's just not true. It's just not true. We We get caught up in our thinking because it's comforting it's a safety blanket right this thinking that we get caught up in but the truth is no one's good or bad everybody's a mix of both some people are dickheads some people are assholes i'll give you that some people are looking for an excuse to be outraged so they can have an identity and do something about it look at me i do this thing For further reading, look up communal narcissism. That's mainly what Twitter is, by the way. Whatever side of whatever fence you sit on, that's what Twitter's made of, communal narcissism. Anyway, God, I hate Twitter. So where was I? Mood swings and splitting. I feel like I've taken you on a very incoherent ride. I'm trying to talk about this in a way that I haven't done before, which is a very difficult thing to do because you talk about splitting a lot because it does cause the most harm. But that was the thing that worked for me. A lot, you know, for on the splitting was trying to understand people, trying to empathize, trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And that's such a valuable thing to do because it helped with other things. It helps with me being insecure in friendships. For example, you know, when you're, you're sat there wondering why your, man, why, why your friend hasn't texted you back, right? It could have been ours. Maybe they've left you on red and they haven't texted you back. And you are losing your shit. That's that's an entirely feasible situation to go in. Do they hate me? Have they fallen out with me? All of this. And we always look at things in how they pertain how they pertain to us. 
Has this person changed their feeling about us? Are they ignoring us? Are they doing something to or us in our benefit? When in actual fact, what we need to do is look at the situation in terms of them. Why, why aren't they answering me back? Well, let's answer that question. Let's, let's actually answer that question. Why aren't they answering you back? They might be stuck on the toilet. Their phone might have run out of battery. They might be being held up at gunpoint. Maybe one of their kids just got hurt and they need to rush to A&E. Maybe their dinner was ready. Maybe their phone's on silent. Maybe they kind of just spaced out a bit because the thing's on TV and they forgot to reply to you. Maybe they've fallen asleep. And that's just what, you know, things you can come up with on the spur of the moment. You start to empathize with the person in their situation. Try and answer that question, why haven't they texted you back? And you can answer it. And you have to get into this habit of doing that, right? Forcing yourself to do that. Forcing yourself to empathize with other people. On a practical level, BPD people are very good at empathizing with others emotionally. Uh, We pick up on a lot of emotional cues micro expressions, that kind of thing. We are very sensitive to that sort of thing. But we tend not to empathize with others in a lifestyle way. We tend to feel that we've got it the worst, that nobody can be hurting more than us, and that everything that they're doing pertains to us in some way. You know, the answer to the question, why isn't your friend texting you back, is maybe they aren't not texting you back. Maybe they're doing something else. They haven't decided, oh, I'm not texting you back. They got caught up in something else because life is happening. It's getting in the way. But we don't empathize with that. We just, we, we try and pick up on the emotions. And that brings about mood swings. It brings about this this ability to just throw ourselves into sadness. I call it the blanket of sadness. There's a book coming out. The blanket of sadness, when it comes down and it wraps you up like a warm, cozy blanket, and it's a weighted blanket. It's so nice and warm. It's like your duvet, but it's sad. It just brings utter sadness with it. And I can, you know, this blanket this blanket just falls on us. It's flying around like Dr. Strange's cape, wrapping people up, going, there, you feel sad now. And it's, it's so painful to live with. And you get caught in it. You, one of the things with it is it numbs you. It numbs you to what it's doing. It sedates you. You don't realize you're wrapped in a blanket of sadness because it's warm and cozy, because it's how you're used to feeling. It feels normal to feel sad and not feeling sad can feel unnerving sometimes. And so you stay in this and you have to sort of shake yourself out of it. You have to realize it. I I do it by having happy things, right? There have to be things that perk me up and these have to be healthy, normal things, right? No drugs or alcohol or that kind of thing. You know, we do, this is why people with BPD develop a lot of substance abuse and, and various other problems like that. Overeating and weight gain and, you know, that kind of thing. Because we, we dive over to the bad things to help us out and then we feel bad very often. So we have a lot of the bad things. Um, and so that's no way to live your life. But to have things planned out that make you happy, that make you feel less bad, that can shake you out of it. And it can be as simple, I mean, how it works for me, it's it's a playlist on Spotify. You know, we're not talking major military operations here. We're not talking big things that are difficult to deal with. It's that song that you hear. It's that movie that you watch. It's that thing on a TV show. It's that TikTok of the little baby running into the plate glass window with a Superman and falling on his ass. It's so many things that just perk you up and shake you out of that thing. And enough to go, hey, I'm wrapped in a blanket of sadness. This isn't real sadness. I'm having a mood swing. I can pull myself out. It takes time and practice. It takes energy and work. You have to realize what things are pulling you down into that in the first place. 
And then the blanket gets less heavy. And you're able to get out from underneath. So for more on splitting, especially, go and check out my YouTube channel, Early Morning Barking on YouTube. It's such a common topic to talk about because we all go through it. I mean, I, I know that not everybody suffers the same uh, markers of BPD, but very commonly, most of us have splitting. We are, We have that black and white thinking. We have that way of falling apart and thinking the worst of things and people and situations. So thank you for listening. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.